Good day, sir. For the discussion today, may I now present to you the atomic structure. For the background, numerous crucial solid material properties are influenced by geometric atomic arrangements and interactions between constituent atoms or molecules. So, in order to get ready for debates to come, think about a few. The foundational and significant ideas of atomic structure and secondary interatomic bonds that keep the atoms that make up a solid together may be found in atoms. The periodic table and the periodic table itself. So for the fundamental concepts about atomic structure, Protons and electrons are both electrically charged. Their charge magnitude is 1.6021, which is positive for protons and negative for electrons. Each atom has a very small nucleus that is made up of protons and neutrons, and it is surrounded by moving electrons. In contrast to protons, neutrons have no electrical charge. So the description of each element is based on the number of protons in the nucleus. The atomic number or the range of this atomic number ranges from 1 to 1 for hydrogen to 92 for uranium, which is the most prevalent element in nature. Expressed in integral units, the atomic mass of a specific atom may be expressed as the sum of the masses of protons and neutrons with the nucleus. Um, neutrons may exist in varying numbers. As a result, some elements contain isotopes or atoms with two or more distinct atomic masses. Um, the weight and average of an element's atomic masses for its naturally occurring isotope is known as its atomic weight. So for the electrons in atoms, it was discovered in the later half of the 19th century that numer numerous phenomena classical mechanics could not explain the involvement of electrons in solid. After then, a set of rules and regulations for atomic energy systems was established and the quantum mechanical theory of subatomic particles. A, compre a comprehension of it is necessary to discuss how electrons behave in atoms and crystalline materials of ideas from quantum mechanics. However, a thorough examination of these ideas is necessary. So for the next slide is Bohr atomic model. It is the idea that electrons move in discrete location. I mean discrete orbitals around atomic nuclei that and that each given electron's location is more or less clearly. Um, defined in terms of its orbital dates back to an early development of condensed quantum mechanics. So, eventually it was um, discovered that this Bohr model had several, several important drawbacks because of its inability to explain a number of electron-related events using a wave mechanical model which as assumes that the electrons has both weight, wavelength and particle-like features a choice was made. So according to this theory, an electron is no longer conceived of as a particle traveling in a distinct orbital. Rather, it is believed that the probability depends on the location of an electron and as it is dispersed throughout the nucleus. So for the quantum number, um, using quantum numbers, 
bore energy levels divide into electron subshells and the state count inside each subshell. Shells are specified by a principal quantum number n, which may take on may take on integral values beginning with unity. Sometimes these shells are designated by the letters K, L, M, N, and O, and so on, which corresponds respectively. So for the electron configuration, we apply the Pauli exclusion principle, another quantum mechanical principle, to electrons notion, according to which each electron state can only retain two electrons, the spins of which must be opposing. So therefore, each of the S, P, D, and F subshells may accent a total of 2, 6, 10, and 14 electrons respectively. When the electrons occupy the lowest possible energies in the accord with the for foregoing restrictions, an atom to said to be in ground state. So, according to the periodic table, the majority of the substances classified as metal actually it originated from the earth. When these substances trade one of their few valence electrons to form positively charged ions, they refer to be electropositive elements. So for the interatomic bonding, it forces the forces that holds atoms together. So, after an infinite distance, physical properties of materials are brought together. The strength of these forces, which come in two varieties, the attractive or FA and repellent FR, it depends on each is influenced by the interatomic distance or spacing. Which is determined, which is determined by the inter. I mean, the distance between the atoms. At vast distances, interactions are insignificant because the atoms are too far apart to have an impact on each other, as will be detailed shortly. Um, this specific form of bonding that exists between the two atoms affects the genesis of an attracting forces, Fa. The net force Fn between the two atoms is just the sum of both attractive and repulsive components. That is, Fn is equal to Fa plus Fr. So there are two types of interatomic bonding. First is the primary bond. It includes the transfer of electrons from one atom to another in order to create more stable electron configurations. So second is the secondary bond, or known as van der Waals. Um, a dipole with a net charge of zero, but it is a slightly positive or negative charge on one atom compared to the other it occurs as a result of an unequal distribution of charges. So, under primary bonding, there are subparts which are ionic, covalent, and metallic bonding. So, first, let's talk about the ionic bonding. So, it occurs between elements that are metal and non-metal. By transferring electrons, the difference in electron negativity that causes bonding is achieved. Crystalline solids are the alternating metal and non-metal patterns that make up the structure that is created by ionic chemicals. Next is covalent bonding. So... Between two non-metals, it occurs uses valent or outermost 
electron pairs to form a connection. These molecules join together, sharing valence electrons, which causes an overlap of atomic orbitals. So, covalent and ionic bonding often adhere to the octet rule. So, according to the octet, ru octet rule, um, atoms prefer to produce eight electrons in their outermost electron shells. So, three violations can cause atoms to disobey the octet rule. First is odd electron. Um, molecules Odd electron molecules. These are molecules that have an odd number of electrons in their valence shells. So the next is expanded valence shell molecules. These are state. These are stable molecules that have less than eight electrons around an atom in the molecules. Lastly, is expanded valence shell molecule. Um, they have compounds formed only by center atoms in row 3 of the periodic table or further elements having empty d orbitals in the valence shell. So what is metallic bonding? Um, it is only present in metallic elements. Positively charged metal ions share their valence electrons in order to form bonds. Due to their solid structure, atoms are frequently close, closely packed and arranged in regular patterns. So for the second bar bonding, the formation of a dipole with a net charge of zero but a, but a slightly positive or negative charge on one atom relative to the other atom. It results from the unequal distribution of charges. And lastly is the fluctuate, fluctuating induced dipole bond. So this bonding is a result of asymmetric electron density distribution. It is a very weak electron dipole bonding. So for the next is polar molecule induced dipole bonds. So with attraction via induction of a nonpolar molecule into a dipole in the presence of a polar molecule. So the arrangement of electrons in nonpolar molecules is distributed by molecules. And lastly is the permanent dipole bonds. So weak intermolecular weak intermolecular forces that resulted from permanently polar, polar molecules. Each positive end of a polar bond is weakly attracted to the negative end of the polar bond. So that, that's all. Thank you for listening.